there aren't certain things we look for in companies. We've kind of gotten to the place now where a lot of people know, you know, it's not secret. We own interest in, you know, mm-hmm. we're kind of a small family investment office. And so we get a lot of people that come to us with things too. We don't, we don't discriminate at what business we'll look at. We own a small interest in a restaurant in Austin. We own interest in nursing homes, um, apartment complexes, looking at an RV park, you know, oil and gas service companies. And so we'll look at anything. We'll just, you know, and I've got friends that'll tell me, Romine's, it's just not that simple. But I kind of believe, I mean, listen, you know, every company you just, making salt and pepper shakers. You just got to figure out how you make them. You know what the common thing that I would say though, that I have found over the years is, and I kind of learned this the hard way. Um, I first and foremost, and with all of our businesses, I want it to be a place that people want to get up and come to work to. Mm. And that's whether we're making money or losing money. Yes. Um, You know, I had jobs and we all, we've all had them that you just hate it. Welcome to Corporate Caffeine. Today, Kyle and I talked to Michael Romines. Now, Michael is a serial entrepreneur, and I don't know how often you guys get to talk to somebody like this, but let me tell you, the mind of somebody who knows how to start and grow multiple businesses and then just keep doing it is absolutely fascinating. Michael is a super fun guy and the stuff he has to say about why and how he can spot opportunities and why they have been so successful at growing them is really, really good stuff. The other thing that's interesting is that Michael's entire family practically is a part of his enterprises and they have a very smart, very healthy way of understanding and respecting each other's giftings and making that scalability work. So let's jump in because you are going to love this conversation. Michael Reminds, welcome. Thank so you. excited to have you on Corporate yep. Caffeine. I'm excited. Yes. It's going to be a fun time. Yes. Yep. Coming all the way out here from East Texas to yep. Fort Worth. Yep. It's always uh, a good drive. <laughs> okay. Well, I will straight off the bat, like tell the audience and you embarrassingly, like why I was so excited. It's because you are that, that uh, you know, like, unicorn of the serial entrepreneur, like the thing that every (laughs) entrepreneur wants to be someday where you just launch and launch and launch. And these businesses are exciting and they're successful and people love you. And I'm like, I don't know about that. We got to have a serial entrepreneur on and it's Michael. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I I thought it was just good hair. Anyway, that's right. (laughs) It looked better this morning before I uh, hit a few balls around the golf course. Oh, yeah. That's all right. (laughs) Well, I'm excited to be here. And, uh, you know, I get that serial entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneur uh, kind of analysis sometimes. And, uh, you know, it's. They're not all home runs, that's for sure, but uh, it's always fun. People know. need to hear more of that, yeah. that it's not always home it's runs. It's not, yep. And it's a struggle. Yep. Um, we, we've talked about it in a few of our past podcasts of um, everyone always sees the glory mm-hmm. and the outcome of that, and they don't always know, A, what it takes, but A, it doesn't always work. That's right. And um, anyway... I'll let you carry on with that. Where'd you get started? You know, how how did you uh, get into this groove or what made you go, you know what, I'm just going to keep on, keep on you know, driving. So it's funny. And listen, I'll just tell y'all, I can be terribly long winded. So do not be afraid to say, <laughs> okay, that's enough of those details. But uh, without being so long winded, I got a criminal justice degree in college, wanted to be a Texas Department of Public Safety trooper here in the state of Texas. Life has its ways. Um, needed a job, knew a friend, first job out of college, uh, working for a small cable company there in Tyler. Uh, my title was Purchasing Expediter. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Try that. I mean, that looks good on a card, too. <laughs> yeah. And that is a glorified office supply purchaser. Oh. Just keep uh, up. I worked in a five story corporate office and you need pins? I'll get you pins. Right. You now. know, you need, you know, printer ribbon. I'll get you printer ribbon. I got a guy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Before Amazon. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. That's right. I was basically the Amazon of that office. There you go. <laughs> right. But um, anyhow, 
kind of plowed through that for about five years. And then my parents called me in 2000 and said, hey, uh, we want to start traveling more and working less. And uh, at that time, the only thing our family did was uh, oil and gas production. Typical oil and gas from this office we could drive, I'd be willing to bet two miles and see a pumping unit or a natural gas well or something. And that's all my father's ever known. Um, and so went and met with them, you know, again, I got a criminal justice degree and I was in the cable business. So I was fit to run an oil and gas company clearly. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> and so, uh, said, yeah, let's do it. You know, and went to work cause I had, I had decided at that point I was going to go to work for myself. Some things had happened in the cable business. We had, we had had a big freeze and lost a big significant portion of our uh, uh, structure around town. And so had worked some real hours, had some demands on me that I thought, if I'm going to work this hard, I'm going to work for myself. So it was a good um, opportunity to get going. But go to work for my parents, and we operated – Oh, at that time, probably, I don't know, uh, less than 100, so I think as I recall, maybe somewhere in the 78 to 85 range, uh, oil and gas wells across East Texas, and kind of off to the races. You know, at that time, I would have been 20, 40, uh, 26 years old, give or take, and thought, man, we're about to just set the world on fire. I, you know, I have an oil and gas background as well. Yeah, I, mo I, yeah, I moved drilling rigs. That's not right. The I remember production that. Production part that, of it. That's as but much a part of it. Around though. the same age, yeah. showing like blowing and going, thinking, oh, yeah. oh, I have the world. That's Get right. Starting this young, I've right. got this. That's exactly right. Yeah. And uh, there are plenty of eye openers to come if only we could see the future, huh? Thank God we can. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. If Fast I'm, forward to 2012. Yeah. Um, <laughs> after yeah. the decline. Yeah. That was a little rough patch the pit. You know, so uh, we got kicking in 01, bought our first expansion foray, if you will, in 05. Um, and basically from there, we were kind of, and never really consciously off to the races, but looking backwards now, we were off to the races. And um, we bought an oil field construction companies, what we call it, just trying to sexy up roustabout. Yeah. Um, we basically did two services, roustabout services and pumping unit repairs, servicing and repairs. And, uh, you know, thought, man, this is, this is great. And, uh, and it was, and it is, and we still have the company Acme oil service and repair. It's, um, a fraction of what it once was, but, uh, just to be frank, this last downturn, um, I just we made a conscious effort that you get to a place where you have to put a value on your time, and to ride those roller coasters when we have what's now would be Lone Star Hazmat, which would now be our uh, would be our seventh or eighth expansion, if you will, um, since we did that first one in 05, um, added to the portfolio, if you will. Lone Star's really given us the ability to say, okay, we got to put a value on our time. Yeah. And, you know, values determine when you're losing money and when you're making money. That's true. And when you have, when you have of those eight companies, we have two that one's a real high flyer and one is, I've used the term for a lot of years, it's like bell and water in a sinking ship. And mm -hmm. uh, it really causes you to put some thought into that value of that time because yeah. one of them requires your time and it the, the return on it is zero and then the other one you're missing that time and so um so anyhow that's kind of where you know that's a real quick snippet from 2005 to 2022 we have about uh, eight companies under our family portfolio and um some of them we own a majority interest in and operate and manage wholly some of them we own a minority interest in and simply sit on the board and try and funnel some of his, you know our own work through those companies and things but uh, eight companies that we have a pretty uh, f focused uh, desire to see success with are, are they all majority oil and gas businesses or they are other than lone star um, yeah 
uh, six of the eight, seven of the eight are. Um, it just kind of developed that way. And Lone Star actually came to us through our core. We, we always have held on to our core family business is the oil and gas production. We are oil and gas investors first and foremost, and from that comes everything else. Uh, but even Lone Star came to us by way of a catastrophic event we had in our production company. Had a spill, three landowners a mile and a half down a creek, oh, almost wow. into a lake that was a city's drinking water. It wow. Was, yeah, so scary. It was. and uh, The worst nightmare. It was. And... I'll give him a shout out, Richard Lenius, who's the president for uh, Lone Star. Um, by the grace of God, he lived and still lives there, but about five miles down the road from this catastrophic event, through a chain of phone calls, he literally kind of crests this hill, and I'm down there trying to, you know, how do I handle all this? I had a landowner that I thought was going to physically harm me, and yeah. and he kind of, oh, there's Richard. And, <laughs> I've got you. Yeah. And uh, here, he, Richard's still with us now, and he's the president of our company at, at Lone Star. And um, But, you know, so they've all come to us through oil and gas. Lone Star has a footprint in oil and gas. I mean, we worked a oil and gas emergency call yesterday, uh, but it's not really our core. Um, but, yeah, they all have some touch of oil and gas. Yeah. So. You know, it's interesting because – it's easy to say that makes sense and it would make it easier on you to expand as you know, the word mm -hmm. that you use, but every single business, no matter the subject matter overlap has its unique quirks. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> has different systems and processes, different ways where billing happens and selling happens. And so how do you navigate, um, you know, yes, you leverage, you know, mm -hmm. industry knowledge and insider knowledge, but it doesn't account for the fact that you're building individual businesses yeah. and each one is going to have a, its quirks and, you know, its diff different needs. How right. do you navigate that? Well, <clears throat> so one of the things I've fought over the years and is the ability, the whole theory of working on your business instead of in your business. Yeah. I've always been an in the business guy. Um, and I've had to work real hard the last, you know, particularly the last two or three years because you just get to a place where, you know, it affects family adversely and those kind of things. But anyhow, without belaboring some of that, you know, kind of our business model is so, so my parents are still um, the second half of that first part where they wanted to start traveling more and working less. Well, we're still working on the working less piece. Um, <laughs> they're 78, 76, oh, wow. still working the business full time every day. Can't wow. get away from it. No. Mm -mm. And wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Uh, we're just as close and thick as we can be. Um, I have a brother that's in the business and even a third brother that has been in the business and still has dealings within the business, but he's not in the business full time. So it's a very family um, driven deal, but basically kind of how we do it is exactly that. I kind of go get in every business. I typically go find whatever the, I mean, we just looked at one yesterday. Um, I don't mind sharing. I mean, we're looking at an RV park and, um, I hear we have money. a friend that's in it and it's really, really for successful. Yes. I'm yeah. like, wow, why didn't we think of I know. That? And so, yeah. So, um, you know, had a business partner bring that to us, um, but kind of our family model will be, so I go out and I look at them, I make some initial yays and nays. And if it kind of meets the yays, then it goes to my father and say, Hey, here's what this is. And if it kind of meets his yays, uh, then I go to my brother that's in the business with us full time and say, Hey, here's kind of the plan. I'm going to now step into this business a little more. And the one that you're working in, you're going to have to take a larger role in. Um, and, and then as I'm in that one and start working my way out, he kind of comes in behind me and, <clears throat> you know, kind of does a lot of the, if you will, for lack of a better term, kind of the puppet managing. And, yeah. um, and, and so, and then I kind of move on to the next project. Yeah. Yeah. So he and, affirms that the processes are real. Say that again. I'm sorry. He kind of re 
uh, confirms that the processes are real, mm -hmm. that you go in and implement, get the structure mm -hmm. down. Now, if he can step into this role and make it work smoothly, not only because he's his brother, a lot of people could step into that role and work that. He's operationalizing it is yeah. what I hear. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's okay. right. In simple terms. <laughs> well, and, <laughs> and what happens is it does, I mean, listen, I, I am a, when, when you start, um, gosh, I'm um, <laughs> well, anyhow, when you start defining people, I, I'm called a visionary regularly. Right. Um, culture index, some of those exactly. kind of things. No, I mean, that's like a specific term that's about right. how you're naturally wired. Exactly. That's right. And of course, um, visionaries like me think every idea and every process I put in place, I mean, gosh, they're going to be perfect. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> exactly. come on. Woo, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm but, laughing because I'm like, yeah, 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 oh my God, I reckon and so, that's so you know, bad. It's, it's <laughs> like, I'm going to hand this off to you, Robert, my brother. That's my brother. And it's kind of, because every decision I've made is great. <laughs> and yes. Robert, what I love about him, and we have a great working relationship and great brotherly relationship, but he'll tell me, uh, this one doesn't work, big guy, I can just tell you. <laughs> and so it does afford us the ability, you know, to kind of, we get these things going and then, so I offer kind of, and I get the ball rolling, if you will, and then Robert comes along and, and you know, it works well. A lot of what I've put in place works, but then he, he does tweak a lot of things. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, what happens is we've got four or five other companies behind that, and some of them uh, progress and have leadership teams quicker that kind of operate on their own. We're very fortunate that Lone Star is one of those that is fully developing its leadership team to the point that Robert and I both are being able to take kind of a less role in, in the business and focus on the business. And so that's kind of our business model to – very long answer. Not at know. all. And so, uh, you know, but like we said earlier, it doesn't always work, um, but we've kind of got a, I think we've got maybe a unique family approach to how we do all this. I was going to comment mm -hmm. on that because family business is amazing. And um, most people that run a family business, no matter what's, you know, spouses or brothers mm -hmm. or, you know, parents and children, but there's also a lot that goes with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you have to learn a lot about business and family and where it doesn't mix and where it does mix yep. and where it has to, you know, I mean, like, so there's so much navigation and there's loads of businesses that don't like where they literally drain, accidentally drain their value because mm -hmm. they d never find those boundaries. Right. Like they never figure out how to have that healthy business relationship mm -hmm. between the family members right. in addition to the family. But you guys really seem to have found that. And especially naming that you were 26 when you started, right. you did not know that you are the visionary personality right. type no, yet. I had no idea. You know, I mean, your brother didn't know that he was an operator or, you know, whichever personality type he is. Mm -hmm. You know, your parents didn't know that. No, because, right. you know, you're too early in your careers mm -hmm. for them to go, oh, we need that right. here. So, I mean, it's interesting. Like, why do you, why or what do y'all know about, or what have you learned about doing this mm. In a loving and healthy way. Well, it's funny you say that. If I had to boil it down into one sentence, um, it's basically we do it with brutal honesty while always respecting uh, whose opinion it is. And what I mean by that is, you know, there are just certain things that are not up for discussion. That is the boss. And if he says no, you might can debate that with him one or two more, but if he gets to know a third time, don't waste your time bringing it up. Yeah. And, and he's a very, very soft spoken, um, you know, just gentle, uh, but, but he's the boss and everyone respects that. Um, you know, mom on the other hand, in theory is the co-boss, uh, you know, but even she says that, you know, listen, he's the brains behind the operation. And what we also know is that, when it comes to really larger, you know, she's the financial brains behind the operation. Mm. And so, you know, we kind of use those guiding principles. Same thing with me. <clears throat> Robert, uh, you know, I'm sure there is. I just can't think of it offhand. But, you know, he's had ideas and things. But by and large, 
he knows that that's really my strength is to go out and find these things. And, to look, and, and he doesn't, what I appreciate, he doesn't carry any pride in, and I try not lord over him that this was my idea, you know, because yeah. it's not, you know, because we we really focus on, at this point, we now have three generations in the company because mom and dad work every day. My, one of my children work in the business and one of my, my niece, one of Robert's daughters works in the business. And we're cognizant that, um, you know, I don't know how you kind of say this, but we're kind of, we're building this mountain for something a lot greater than just me or even Robert or mom and dad. Yeah. Um, you know, there's years to come of people, you know, I'm expecting my first grandchild in three weeks. And so that'll be our fourth generation. So exciting. Yeah, oh, it wow. is. Oh, and my so, gosh. you know, we already have things in place that, my parents' great grandchildren will benefit. And so we keep that in mind that this is not, you know, because we are believers that, I mean, would I like to be as wealthy as Jeff Bezos? I mean, should I take it? I'd try. I'd try it, you know? it yeah. for sure. <laughs> but you do kind of in your life get to a place where, you know, what's enough? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly what I was going to say. Enough's enough. And, you know, so we're preparing for, you know, yesterday or day before yesterday was um, National Giving Day. And, you know, and we've got things in place. And so that's what we try and keep in mind is, and we've been, I say this all the time. There's people in this world that have got problems, real problems, and I ain't one of them. And I, and I say it just like that every time. Our family recognizes we don't have problems. Do we got things that rub us the wrong way sometimes? Sure. Yeah. But that's kind of how we go about it. We try and keep real perspective in where we're at in life, what we're doing, our ability to bless, first and foremost, our employees, and then beyond that. And, you know, and listen, we have some real heated discussions. We try not to yeah. use the term arguments. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. but it always goes away from that with we're unified in whatever family decision we made. And in the end, we walk out and we respect that. However, um, ha however um, passionate they were in their opinion, it was just their opinion, and their opinion is not wrong. It's just different than mine. So, That's huge. Yeah. That's amazing. And it's, I mean, it's, and it is. It's a lot of fun. I talked to my dad on the way up here. I'll probably talk to him on the way back. Um, you know, and and we had dinner with my parents at our house at their house where i grew up you know three nights ago and you know and so so fun yeah we wouldn't have it any other way yeah it's great yeah it's great so um out of these different adventures you've had what is the one thing they've all had in common besides working towards a net profit which <clears throat> everyone or yep. a certain percentage very interesting question yeah <laughs> what is the one thing they've had in common or what do you look for in a business oh that Either way, yeah. Or what do you look for in a business that you go, oh well, I've these seven companies have been successful. I know where they headed. I know I can implement that same thing in here. So, so I'll tell you, there aren't certain things we look for in companies. We've kind of gotten to the place now where a lot of people know. You know, it's not a secret. We own interest in. You know, mm -hmm. we're kind of a small family investment office. And so we get a lot of people that come to us with things too. We don't, we don't discriminate at what business we'll look at. We own a small interest in a restaurant in Austin. We own interest in nursing homes, um, apartment complexes, looking at an RV park, you know, oil and gas service companies. And so we'll look at anything. We'll just, you know, and I've got friends that'll tell me, Romines, it's just not that simple. But I kind of believe, I mean, listen, you know, every company you just making salt and pepper shakers, you just got to figure out how you make them. You know, what the common thing that I would say, though, that I have found over the years is, and I kind of learned this the hard way. Um, I first and foremost, and with all of our businesses, I want it to be a place that people want to get up and come to work to. Mm. And that's whether we're making money or Amen. losing money. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I had jobs, and we all, we've all had them, that you just hated, you yeah. know. And I, 
I won't belabor the story, but I had an incident. I can remember clear as day this incident that happened when I was young and working. And, and I said right there, I said, if I ever am a high up manager and I can dictate people's, you know, not dictate, but I can have influence on how their life yep. is at work or if I own my own company, I'm not going to. I'm not it, being that guy. Yeah. No, nope. I know and, what you're talking about. And so, and then of course, the older I get, the just the irony in life, and we say this to a lot of our or all of our staff regularly. The irony in life is how much time you spend professionally trying to pro- provide and support for what is most important personally in our families, in our children, our parents, our grandkids, those kind of things. And so that's one thing, and that's been hard. I mean, listen. Again, of the eight companies we've got, and I'm just quickly thinking, one or two of them started off as something else. And just to be frank, we sucked at that. And we were fortunate to be able to roll it into something else that's now great. And um, But, you know, one of them, again, we've got right now is a struggle. It's been an ongoing struggle for years. Uh, as a side note, shutting a company down is harder than anyone ever thought it was. Yeah. Uh, Especially when you talk about the people. If you got into ex- it because of the people. Yeah. Yep. And these, these are some of our longer, longest tenured employees and they're great. Been with us. I got one guy in a company that's been with us. He was the third hire I made in that company and he's been through all the ups and downs with us. But anyhow, um, I I just say all that to say, you know, we have said that whether we're making money or whether we're not making money, never had a payroll check bounce and whether we're taking a lick at the bank at, in our family checking accounts. Mm-hmm. My employee that got out of bed this morning at 6.30 to clock in at 7 and go do whatever I asked him to, no. he'll never know any different. And yeah. so we I, I've been down that, that road. Um, I've we, been down that road in the, the oil and gas business I um, had mm-hmm. um, where it wasn't that I wasn't profitable. It was I had some slow pairs all at once. Yep. And I'm going, oh, no. I mean, this couldn't come at a worse time. Right. You go to the bank and you're like, all right, I got to do what I can do to make this payroll because I know it's coming. Right. It's just a matter of when. Yep. I hope it's coming. But you do it. You, right. make, you, <laughs> you make, you cut the payroll make, first. Yeah. That's right. Because it's they not work their for problem. you. That's right. It that's wasn't right. up to them that's to collect right. a bill. That that's was, exactly right. That's my business. Mm-hmm. Not their problem. Yep. You yep. know, and you have to respect that. Mm-hmm. So that's been the one thing. You know, I used to have a theory and I used to verbalize it kind of going back to yeah, other than the profit piece, I will say this. I used to, based on that story of when I had that incident when I was a young worker and I said to myself, I won't ever be that guy. When I very first, and this was with Acme, our very first foray into uh, outside of our production company, I remember, I mean, I've got people that still with me that will tell you. I used to say, we will be a great employer first and a profitable employer second. And I learned a hard lesson that that is only that is a finite theory, can mm-hmm. be a finite theory. And so we make no bones about it now that we are going to be profitable first and foremost. We're going to be good stewards of our money, and we're going to be a great employer second. And, uh, you know, and it's worked for us. And, you know, again, they're not all home runs. You know, we got a couple that are singles, and we got a couple that are home runs, and we got a couple that are still in a rundown between home and first base, but you know. But uh, if you go into it with some of those theories, in our opinion, you know, it's kind of a pay it forward mentality. Yeah, these people will do anything, you know, for you because we're trying to do everything for them first. We had a meeting just today before you got here with some of our employees that have been in town, mm-hmm. and uh, we, we were talking about what we we're projected to hit going in halfway through our year. Well, based on starting in December through right. May. Um, anyway, it's a side note. And um, I don't fully open the books, but I talk about the net profit it's and what close. it means for everybody. It's yeah. really, really close. They can close. do the math. Oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. know. Of, and, the, and to go back to what you said, if we're not profitable, we're all going to lose in the mm-hmm. long run. Mm-hmm. And profit's what going to keep us driving. That's profit's right. going to what put more money in your pocket. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's kind of, it, we our bonus structure set up that way right. off of our net profit. Right. Well, and the business, you know, 
And from a business perspective, the word that you use that I love, you know, from business, but all of life, you know, that word about stewardship, mm-hmm. I mean, it's so critical. I mean, you're given responsibility to steward all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Money is one of them. And mm-hmm. how do you direct that for the benefit of all? Right. And profit is what you're stewarding. Everything else is just ego. I mm-hmm. mean, it's empty air. Right. You can't create value, you know, yeah. from that. And, you know, the other thing we're trying to steward is business knowledge and business education. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have those sit down meetings because, you know, we would love for them to stay with us for 20 and 30 years, but some of them won't, you know, and we will love them as they leave and we will try to have been the best possible, you know, possible thing for their life at that time and being knowledgeable about how businesses run, how it aligns with our core values, how it aligns with our belief system in that it's not separate. How we look at money and how we look at profitability and how we look at being good to people, Mm -hmm. it's not the same. It's not something different. It's the same conversation in like, you know, just trying to clarify how we navigate it. And then we learn from the questions they ask and the responses that they make. And, Mm -hmm. and isn't that what it's about? (laughs) We we had a guest on, was it Mike Myro who said, oh my gosh, he's going to kill me if this is wrong. (laughs) <laughs> come Reven- back up. It's, it's written down right over there. You I know. know what? Yeah, Keep you talking. should go get I'm it because, like, that. we can cut that part out. So. No, I'm not going to cut it out. <laughs> I was just going to say, you can't do that on a podcast, can you? <laughs> I mean, you can't get up and run off. Yeah, he totally can. <laughs> Considering <laughs> oh, he's the editor, yeah, he gets to do whatever he wants. <laughs> so, so tell me, you, you look, you kind of nodded towards, and then I thought, man, I, I really did think. Can I can I look or not? You can definitely so, look. So these are y'all's core values here yeah. on the pillar. Yeah. Yeah. Very uh-huh. cool. I I'm sure I read the other one when I was got here. I like that truth. What are the rest? So mastery is when you walk in, mm-hmm. and that one is about honoring our clients' mm-hmm. mastery, um, honoring each other's mastery. So I, when you were talking about you guys and your family respect each other's mm-hmm. roles as well as each other's gifting, right. that's what it's about. Because iron sharpens iron, and you have to be confident in each other and your ability to love one right. another um, in order to really elevate mastery. Because right. it means you're by default not going to agree because you're deciding to go deeper into very different disciplines. Right. So truth, um, tell the truth early and often. Truth very creates cool. vulnerability and trust. Mm-hmm. So it's funny, I, was, I kept trying to go deeper than the surface stuff. So trust is an obvious one, but what's behind that. Right. And I felt like, well, lying and fear, which, you know, are closely linked, erodes right. trust. Yeah. And so that's why truth is the thing that Very came good. to the surface. And then of course, higher power is truth. And so yep. that's why it's yellow also. And then um, growth, core value. We shouldn't grow companies if that's not a core value. Yeah. So grow companies, grow ourselves, grow profit, yeah. grow things. You're either growing or dying. Very the last cool. one's fun. Um, the last one's fun? Fun. Oh yeah, great. And you know what's so weird? We probably need to lose that's enough. I- we don't have anything like that. That's ironically fun. the one we... It's the one we're... <sighs> The worst. You're the worst. You're the worst at. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We have fun, like her and I do, and our friends when we get together. This is fun. The podcast is fun. Yeah, and we try to bring it in the work, and we're just, all of us get so wrapped up into it that it's hard the just to joke the around a ton. You know? Yeah, the yeah. mastery like of the growth we've got thing to remind takes ourselves that. all really deep. Interesting. And, Interesting. and we started picking a day where each of us, and we're just now getting this implemented, yeah. so head and really the team's like we're waiting (laughs) yeah yeah so each of us get to pick a day to do something outside of work okay um very cool could be anything yeah we could play a board game i don't know whatever it may be very cool it's funny when she make these uh we just talked about this not long ago and i'm like truth isn't that kind of a given that's the one we go back to more than any of them really uh because we tell people especially people who work for us tell the truth early and often Mm mm-hmm it will solve more problems. Yep. Clients will like it. Yep. You know, you have to be honest. Be honest. We want to be the first ones to find out. The clients the same way. They don't want to find out from one of their right. um, customers that we did something wrong, right. whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. I did butcher that, by the way. I just went and got this. <laughs> I'm nowhere near okay, it. What is okay, it? <laughs> so revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash flow is king. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, that is. Anyway. You know what? Uh, we have an artist on staff. We should have him make it beautiful and hang it on the wall. I know. I'll, I can't believe I forgot. I guess the pressure's You'll have to, on camera. That's right. You'll have to quote whoever the uh, 
author of that that statement is. I know. Yeah, that's true. I know Mike Myro was definitely the one that brought it brought to it us. To so I don't attention. know if it came from a book or what. We'll put yeah. it in the show notes. Yeah. That's how we remedy that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is. Uh, that's interesting. I have not heard it that way. I've got a a friend. He's a friend, but he's a young business owner, and you know. I don't think people ever set out to say, I'm going to be, I'm going to be someone's mentor. Maybe they do. I mean, you make a conscious decision to pour into people, but I'm just not a big title guy. But anyhow, I say all that to say, he has said before that at this point, I am kind of a mentor to him. And, and, uh, just hearing that cash seems to be the always conversation we always end up back to. He is so adverse to debt. I'm probably too comfortable with debt, but, uh, you know, but there is so much truth. The world will never, uh, never change, in my opinion, that cash is king. Yep. You know, and, you can uh, make money off of debt, but it boils down to that money you make. Will it keep everything rolling? Right. In the right That's direction. Right. Will it mm-hmm. withstand? Uh, we were just talking about this, too. I was like, I, we try to carry a certain amount of cash to withstand the flows of business. Yeah. And there you will know, always be there flows. There will always be flows. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, it's interesting around that cash is king thing is, you know, it takes money to grow. Like mm-hmm. growth costs money. Yep. And I think, and you know, people flippantly say, oh, it takes money to make money. But I think people misunderstand what that means. It literally means when you grow, when mm-hmm. you do anything of forward progress, mm-hmm you have more expenses. It wasn't just that you had to invest ahead of growth. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes something drops in your lap. Sometimes you have the wind at your back. That might not have always costed you something, but it will cost you Mm -hmm. in order to sustain it and maintain it and operate it and do it well. And I, you know, and I think like that's misunderstood and it's important. Like it's really important to understand cash is king and it's not a flippant reason. It's because it's about stewardship and discipline. Well, and you make a good point. I can remember the very first time I ever went down to get a line of credit and, (laughs) and to, (laughs) to be frank, I think I was probably going to get it to cover payroll. Um, and I can remember, I mean, cause I mean, I was, I want to say literally I was going in and I was, you know, and basically my father was kind of like, well, if you think we need a line of credit, you need to go find one. And he, you know? he didn't operate off lines of credit before this. No, uh, at that point he, well, he had in the past. Um, so the quick story of him prior to me coming to work for him, he had made ventures out into the, he had had forays out into other uh, businesses besides the oil and gas business, but like a lot of guys, I mean, basically in 82, he had a drilling co- company. They had a workover rig company. Like a lot of guys, they owned two or three planes at that time. And, and it all, and he had a group of eight guys. Yep. It went South quickly, had a group of eight guys that they did everything together and six of them filed bankruptcy. And my father just said, that's not, and I'm not passing judgment on people that do file bankruptcy. Right. There's, it, it's there for a reason. But right. he just said, that's not how I was built. I got into these debts. I'm going to get myself out of these debts. And I've been with them. And that was in 82. And they kind of started filing bankruptcy thereafter. And But he basically got on payment plans. So anyhow, I say all this. Like, he had been on cash for a long, long time. And he basically just said to me, if, we need, if it's time for a line of credit, um, you need to go find one. So I mm. went down and started talking to him, you know, start with a bank we bank with. And, and well, anyhow, I was going in, I want to say it was like literally $23,000. I didn't know, you know, and I was like, oh God, I need $23,000. And, you know, and I'll never forget the banker. He was like, um, he said, uh, well, I mean, if you're going to get 23,000, you might as well get 75,000, Michael. And I thought, you know, I was young and stupid. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll take a it. Yeah, yeah, I'll take it, buddy. And then, you know, then you think, there's this false sense of, oh man, we're 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 cash rich now, man. Yeah. Because if I need it, this I'll is just a get part it out of operations. There. Yeah, work with the bank. And so that's right. Well, anyhow, so fortunately that didn't bite me too bad, but it was the only line of credit I did with him, and it was the only one we had for a while. And then I don't know how long ago this was, but nonetheless, I went to the banker. Just kind of getting back to your your story and point about growth and how much it cost. And I'll never forget when I went to the second banker to 
say, hey, line of credit. And at this time, we knew we needed, you know, we had done our own evaluation and we were looking for 150 or 250,000 or something. And he used a term that I'd never thought of, but he said, you know, Michael, the only thing we can give you whatever it was we were looking for, he said, but I'd rather give you uh, as much as you need now. I'd rather give it to you the first time. I don't want to go back and forth and all this. Because he said, the thing that I find most business owners don't appreciate is when that animal starts eating, it eats every day, every day, every day. And going back to what you said about your rig moving business, you know, when you got that one client mm. that owes you, you know, $1.2 million, and they're kind of quiet on the phone calls and <laughs> they're not responding to text messages, that animal's eating every day, every day. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, finding that fair balance of yeah. cash and, uh, you know, and listen, we've been guilty as a lot of them, you know, you get some cash in and then you're like, hey, we're going to make distributions, you know, and then the last thing you want to do is 18 months later have to put checks back in the company. That's, that's never fun. No, you know, so not fun. finding that balance is, you know, uh, if it were easy, this whole business oh. ownership thing were easy. Yeah. We'd all own them. There, yeah. yeah. Yes. And we got a saying around, but I don't know who listens to the podcast. So, <laughs> you know, if it were all easy, the blanks would be doing it. You can fill in whoever you want to say, you know, one of my best friends, an insurance agent, I'll say the insurance agents would be doing it. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, but yeah, that's, you know, you just, and, and going back to core values, talking about truth and, and some of y'all's core values. And, and again, I'm 47. I think I've got early onset of dementia. I already forget what you said the others were. Um, but you alluded to always educating, always being better, always wanting to be better today than I was yesterday. That's one of our core values is learning. Yeah. Mm, just yeah. be willing to learn because if you're not willing to learn, mm, owning your own oh, business, it's not for you. It's goodness. not for you. No. And you know. Learning the hard way isn't always the best thing either, even right. though it can uh, help out in the long run. But being proactive and learning ahead of time and setting yourself up for success, I probably, not to tap my own on uh, it, Hit my own horn. What is it? Toot your own Toot horn. Toot my own horn. Right. But I probably learned more about business in the last five years than I did 10 years prior to that. Right. Just because I didn't want to make the same mistakes. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I admire that kid that looks up to you as mm -hmm. a mentor. More people need that. I think younger people are looking for those people nowadays. But when, when I came up through it, it was like, ah, we just do things our own way. Right. You know, you struggle. This is what everyone did. No right. one's open about their business. Right. No one wants to talk about it. Not even really over a, a beer or something. Right. It was just like, oh, yeah, I'm successful. I'm not. Or I had a tough time, whatever it may be. And now we're like, oh, no, I, I want to talk to other people about it. You know? Well, and I don't know where it came from, but I've just been real fortunate, just personally fortunate. And, and it's, it's in our business I mean, in our family, and then it's even in our business with the, most of our leadership teams, as I kind of quickly, is, you know, we, we don't have any pride about what we don't know. You know, I'm not going to just fake some decision because I've got pride. It's huge. You know. Yeah. Yes. And if they're, you know, young or old, I would just say new business owners or business owners, you know, I'm a part of a, you know, they Again, I'm not big on titles, but they call it CEO Accountability Group. I'm a part of Convene, and um, and it's been huge to be able to sit there and be vulnerable, and you know. But man, people want to help people out, you know. Yeah. And you'll pretty quickly find out if they don't want to help you out, they're probably not someone you want in your circle, anyhow. No, nope. right. it's pretty right. straightforward, yeah. and you know, yeah. your feelings don't even get hurt. You just realize that's not my person. That's right. Yeah, and so exactly. You're right. Mentors, mentorships. Um, you know, those are really, have been huge for me. I think about, I mean, I could just quickly clip off, uh, you know, names and people that are just every day still involved in my life. And and uh, and it's fun to, you know, again, to Zane's his name and to work, you know, kind of, if you will, backwards with Zane and talk to him about some of, you know, it's fun because I get to chuckle at, uh, I remember we had those problems, you know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So, but it is, it's a big piece and. Um, people that don't have that, I would encourage them to. You know, yeah. I'm sure y'all have been through that, just like you referenced. Well, it's kind of one reason we started this corporate caffeine is to have um, 
other people on here that could just share some wisdom and right. we don't know where it's going to go right or where it would head mm -hmm. but there's gonna be value usually out of something right usually they're business owners that sit on the other side of the right. microphone talk right. to us well and i think there's just a lot of garbage communication um out there about the business world that profit is evil or that yeah. corporate america define that as broadly mm -hmm. or as narrowly as you want but in general they think anybody that's making a buck, you know, is rotten and they're never out for the good. And it's not true. And right. while it is true sometimes, and those make big splashy headlines that the media just loves to mm -hmm. lap up, you know, it by and large, there is a huge, I don't even want to call it a grassroots movement, but I, maybe there is a movement going on. But all I know is there is a huge tribe of people that care deeply about being good in the business world oh, and yeah. that business yeah. is not just about right. keep putting, shoving as much cash in your pocket right. and running away, you know? And so that's what I hope people are hearing and that they do have some sort of mentorship. And if they have those same hearts when they're in the audience, mm -hmm. you know, that they're like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not crazy. Like right. you can be good and you should be good. Well, and I will <laughs> say this <clears throat> again, I've got 28 or I'm sorry, <laughs> 26 and 24 year old boys. And then my daughter will be 21 here in two weeks or so. And, you know, and I think this quote unquote younger generation gets a bad rap in a lot of cases, you know, because one of the things that I've learned from them, from them, that younger generation is, and we were talking about Bombas before we got on the air Yeah, is, you know, these kids, um, they want to work. They want to spend their hours doing things that are for the greater good. And so if we're going to sell a sock and give a sock away, you know, great. Yeah. And we have a kingdom purpose at Lone Star. And in it, it quotes Genesis 2 and 15 that says to care for it and maintain it as the Lord has instructed us to. And we are, we're still trying to figure out exactly what that looks like, especially when you're in a, catastrophic cleanup business, catastrophic event cleanup business. We have a lot of opportunities to leave things better than we found them. That's amazing. But, you know, I agree that there is, if, if you're doing good things, I find that most people, especially as this younger generation is entering this workforce and getting that they don't care how much money you're putting in your pocket, if, if you show that you're making a better world for it, and, uh, you know, and that's one of the things, again, I've really appreciated that yeah. even as recently as 10 years ago, probably I would have said, huh, I'm making all the money for me, you know, but we've seen a real shift and, um, you know, and it is, it's just, I mean, listen, we can all have different opinions, but the one thing we should all, in my opinion, be working for is to make the world a better place, to yeah. leave it better than it was yesterday. To Let's just be better people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And and I and, and obviously as business owners, I get to kind of soapbox in a little bit, but as business owners, we have a big ability to do that. You know, and again, going back to what I said earlier, for us it starts with our employees, you know, between the handful of companies, you know, we probably have upwards of three to four hundred employees. I don't know the exact number now. And you know, if we can positively affect their lives yeah and then they go positively affect their children's life and you know it's just the ripple effects that people don't stop and for just me and yeah. just you and just you know yeah. and and sometimes that ripple for right tonight is just one or two people but that's what we need that positive ripple Sometimes you have to play really small in order to go really big because you have no idea what that kind word what mm -hmm. that smile, what that intense right. but heartfelt conversation, you have no idea right. how that's going to change someone's life oh, and how absolutely. they'll change others. Yeah. So you're right. You know, that ripple effect, you, people should never take for granted the opportunities that are in front of them every single day. Yep. And it feels amazing it does. to care about something bigger than yourself. Yep. Like it just makes work better and mm -hmm. it does make things more fun right. so you're always welcome to soapbox here because that's like <laughs> one of our favorite things to yeah. do <laughs> yeah. yeah 
So. Oh gosh. Okay. So I do have a totally different question. So you mentioned playing golf this morning <laughs> and it is very Shh, tempting you must for have me. Done that. Yeah, it's a <laughs> Thursday. Not- it's supposed to be <laughs> Friday afternoon. I was going to say, I'm not going to bust him on what day of the week. <laughs> oh, I just been- did. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me edit that. Yeah. It's Friday. No, I'm just <laughs> no so, you know, I, I think it is, I have had periods in my life and I still slide back into them where I literally just start to drown in work almost on purpose, you know, where I don't have clear enough thinking to go, really? Do I have to do that tonight? Do I have to do that on a Saturday? Is what I'm saying inside of my head or about my to-do list, is that really true? Usually not. It's usually more about my ego and my sense of self-importance and all of this other stuff. Okay, so how? Like, have you always been like, I know how to play a little bit or I know how to find the balance? Because the intensity of what you do, mm-hmm. you know, launching and expanding and rebuilding and constantly troubleshooting right. and learning. I mean, it's a lot of... Ch- 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 yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure I speak for all of us that you think about it all the time. I do. New adventures are like, you That's cannot... Right. You don't just go, yeah. oh, think about that right. eight to five. Right. So for you, do you have that. a balance? How do you do we it? How do dinners. you decide to play? Like, how do you decide yeah. to do things? We go out to dinner for fun. We talk about business sometimes. Oh, when we know we almost, should shut it down, yeah. it's almost we still ludicrous. do it. So, yeah, yes. yeah how's the work-life balance? Not very for good. For Michael. <laughs> no. I wish my wife, Jenny, were here. <laughs> She'd want to start soapboxing. Uh, you know, it is a problem. And it's yeah. one of the things that, again, um, you know, I talked to – you know, we mentioned my friend that's one of y'all's clients, and and uh, he and I kind of had the same problem, if you will, workaholics. Uh, and, and in fairness to them, my wife, his wife, um, is they're so supportive, it, it almost breeds the problem. Mm. So really, my workaholicism is my wife's fault. That's what I've just. <laughs> no, but I would love it, to see it, her punch you right now. Is this underlying um, wording around? Yeah. Well, she likes to spend money too. Yeah. yeah. And no. I've got to, no. I got to, hold on. I'm just adding yeah. to it. <laughs> but she, um, yeah, I, and I shouldn't say it's getting better. It is, it's an ongoing, I mean, it's funny, just last night. Um, so um, without, again, uh, middle child youngest son is getting married in a month and so we're kind of right in the throes of uh figuring all this not figuring it all out but kind of getting all the i's dotted and t's crossed and we had to go out to our golf course and we're buying golf shirts for father son son son-in-law golf outing the day before the wedding blah 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 and so when we got done there we walked over to um the little eatery at the at the club and just sat down and I mean, and I was just banging away on text messages and emails, and she's trying to talk to me about the wedding plans and whatnot. And and like most people in my position, I think I'm the world's best multitasker. And um, but um, she, I could tell it was wearing thin on her, and so I, I did at least before she had to correct me, had some sense to say, okay, I got to just set this phone down for a minute, and so. We went from there to some friend's house we were having dinner with and did pretty well about not doing anything. You know, I mean, I got some sense. Like right now, my phone's sitting over there. And typically, maybe not in a podcast, but typically even in meetings, you know, I'll have my, I'll be meeting and I'll have my phone down here. And, um, and so it's not the best. Uh, it is a real, it's just a, I, I hesitate to use the word problem. Right. But it's a real problem. It's something you have to cognizant, constantly be cognizant of. Yeah. You know, because it does get to the place where it's not fair, you know. Um, and listen, there's, again, we kind of go back to, um, we're just not really all the way on this end of the spectrum or this end of the spectrum about anything because nothing in this world is all, all bad. Nothing's all, all great. So, I mean, there's some, you know, we're pretty convinced that, my kids, I'm fortunate to have great work ethics, and it's not that they didn't get it from her because she's lazy or anything, you know. But they've seen me working, and you know, and it's just kind of what we do. So, but it's something that I, I constantly need to. And what's funny is I'm doing better about it. So we went on a trip about uh, two months ago, friend of ours' fiftieth birthday, and we went 
to the Virgin Islands. Never been. And I was under the impression we were going to be off the grid. We rented a boat and we were going to sail. And I was under the impression we were going to be off the grid. And so I had worked real hard up till I left then. I mean, and I verbalized with all of our leadership teams, hey, I'm going to be gone. And as much as I want to be able to communicate while I'm gone, we're going to have to have some things in place. And so it forced me to really put some things in place um, that I'd never had in place. Mm. Checks and balances. You report to this person. If, and if it's worst case scenario, you know, you can call my father or you can try and get a hold to me. And, uh, well, lo and behold, went on the trip, was not off the grid. We were on the boat, but it's amazing around the Virgin Islands. They have cell phone service out in the water. Wow. And it was great. Yeah. Um, but we... Um, People got uh, transactions on their offshore account. I, I guess so. That's <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. How can I trade yeah. my artwork yeah. and stashes somewhere That's without right. having global yeah. communications? But what it did is it... It forced me when I got back that I had some of these things in place and my desk are much cleaner. My briefcase, briefcase is much lighter and it's worked it. And I, and I did make a conscious decision and that I was going to make a conscious effort when I got back, when I saw in those first two or three days that, Hey, these things are kind of moving along without me. And so the last two months have been, I, I'll assure you this. Thursday to go out at 9.30 in the morning and play golf on a Thursday is first time in 25 years I've ever done that, I'll assure you, because benefit golf tournaments are on Mondays or Fridays. Uh, and so I've done it because someone yeah. would probably, one of my staff would be like, well, you play in these benefit tournaments. Look, like, those are on Mondays and Fridays. <laughs> Thursday morning, I'll assure you I've never done that. And so now what I'm kind of trying to figure out is, is – are there things that are getting missed and or not getting done? Or am I kind of like you said, is it just this um, self-worth that I think I have in the businesses, in the businesses right. that I'm wondering if things are getting missed? And so that's what I'm trying to work on now is, you know, trusting and I'm looking, kind of working on the businesses to see if there's anything that rears its head, you know, and so... Uh, but it's a tough, it's tough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Y'all have to keep that in mind when y'all move two miles down the road here. You can't work a little bit longer because oh, you got to go just the I know. Uh, 25 That's minutes really longer good I point. can work because We're notorious. I used to be driving. We're notorious for being here at 7 a.m. After working and, out and stuff. Yep, and, exactly. And, and then, yeah. you know. Maybe we leave at 4.30 to live, miss traffic, but more often than not, it might as well just be 6 also. So, I mean, we're... Miss traffic on the back end, I'll be productive oh, for another hour and a half. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's very easy to be like, wow, we just made 11 hour days a habit and I skipped lunch, like mm -hmm. didn't go anywhere. I mean, nothing. And it's yeah. not healthy. It's not healthy. We're, we're not hoping healthy. this actually frees up more time. Yeah. Being this close. Good. Instead of opposite right. of that of being right next to work we're yep. going to go all right now we don't have a commute time yep um less maintenance we can set on the boundaries house. yeah we can lock the door and go it's Good. a town home by the way oh, for, yeah. you, you know that but right. um now everyone else we're less handcuffed by what owns us that's what right. we're hoping that's what we're trying you to know because the business owns us so oh, we're yeah. trying to learn how to mm -hmm. own the business yeah. <laughs> We want to so, get into other things too, and we're yeah, just like exactly. we got to free those, free that time up somehow. You know, it's funny because just recently has like the crack in my brain started opening up towards the idea of what if I did try to build the business where other people could replace me mm -hmm. someday. And so it's not about am I going to, and it's not about do I want to. It's right. about what if I could build right. a business? And, you know, you, you hear that language all the time, but it's very different understanding mm -hmm. it here and then thinking to yourself, should I be thinking like that? And really taking it to right. heart. And that that is just barely starting to occur to me um, where I'm starting to look at my to-do list critically and look at my team, you know, and thinking, am I holding them back because I'm doing things that I ought to be enabling them right. and saying, where are you going to take it right. versus where could I take it? And, um, my business coach, Ken Stiles, you know, he, he says, um, work is supposed to be the engine for a great life, 
not your life is engine right. for work. Mm-hmm. And I heard him repeat that over and over and over. And I was finally like, good Lord, I'm not living that. Oh, that's why he keeps repeating that to right. me. <laughs> you know, is, um, it, you know, there's got to be the life side, um, you know, that you're enabling. <laughs> and so, you know, I think we did a good job in between getting out of oil and gas and just the last couple of years of blender when it's really accelerated, um, and the ups and downs of the pandemic, like, so just the last crazy of right. the couple of years, last couple of years, which is probably a better way to put it. Like those first, you know, years were, we did decent because we were prioritizing the boys' schedules. We had to drive mm-hmm. them everywhere. Mm-hmm. We also had to be so committed because he wasn't in the business until just a couple of years ago about going on date nights and, right. you know, yeah. and so I think the last three years, you know, I mean, where the boys are independent and Kyle's in the business, um, where that's really starting to be like our natural tendencies are starting to be like quicksand to us where we're right. just like starting to sink into them a little too much. And we, you know, it's up to us as we become empty nesters to be like, all right, we got some decisions yeah. to make yeah. about how to not it's, do that again. <laughs> yeah. Like what's full throttle, you know? Um, yeah. And defining it like, and being yeah, like, we can be full throttle in the business without, damaging something else, you know, but we don't know what that looks like yet. (laughs) Well, and it's funny you bring that up because, um, again, parents are 78, 76. It's, and and they sit, uh, they sit in a room about the size of this room. Um, mom's desk is here. Dad's desk is there. And they, they basically not basically, they stare at each other all day. They can just look at each other all day. Yeah. And so they're pretty in it, you know, but my wife (laughs) has just recently come into the business. Oh, really? On a more full-time basis. She's been in and out over the years, um, but always with a focus on raising the kids. But now that we've been empty nesters for three years, um, started coming back in. And so now she carries a pretty steady role within the company. And one of the things we're already guilty of is we almost take pride in, kind of our 12 hour Mondays. That's, we talk about those, you know, because what we'll basically do is try and get as much work done, you know, on a Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And, uh, and then because Thursdays and Fridays, we're starting to, um, visit our daughter who plays college soccer and, you know, we want to travel more and stuff. But even in that, I don't know that that 12 hour Monday, you know, we, we kind of almost brag about it because what basically we work, we got a couple of places we'll stop and eat on the way home, go home, and then you just crater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, it feels good from a professional standpoint because I can yeah. grind it out for 12 hours. That's no problem yeah. and be real productive. But then you just, you get home and it's just like, yeah. you know, God, don't talk to me. Don't, you know, and so it's just an ongoing figuring out what that looks like. Yeah. yeah. I was in that rut just yesterday of just a long day and I was so done. And it was only about, what, 6.15 at that point. But it only takes waking up in the middle of the night and losing an hour or two where you just go, "Uh uh-oh, that just threw me for a loop. Mm -hmm. This 10, 12-hour day just turned the crap quick. Right. When you get home, you're like, you're done, done. Yep. And yeah. um, it, it seems like Mondays are our Monday morning meetings we have with the team, blah, blah, blah. Right. And it seems like we do stay longer, like mm-hmm. you said. It's just something about getting that week started right of going, all right, you put everything up right now. Right. And you set the tone for the rest of right. the week. And you're like, if I can match that, another, this is going to be a productive week. Right, right. Uh, and we, usually Thursdays, it seems like, is our other one. Oh, really? Bookmark them. Yeah. Um, Fridays, you don't know how they're going to turn out. Right. It could be long. could really? be short. Really? It could be, wait a minute, it's a beautiful day and it's two. We've yeah. got everything done this week. What? That's the That goal. don't happen often. That is That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal, yeah. We should be able to do that and we don't. Yeah. I mean, like, we don't go, we're good. Like, we could leave right now and why not? Like the team is good. We're good. The clients yeah. are good. Walk out the door. We don't, we, that, that's the goal. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, okay, that's just a small little thing. I'm going to start being like, <laughs> and, can and I create a two thirty day <laughs> that I bet you y'all struggle with as well that I find myself, I find this somewhat, I would say probably significant amount of guilt for, because we want to treat our staff and our employees fair and equal with us, but um, 
I'm not sure you get to leave at 2.30 on Fridays, just, you know, like I do. Right. right. And so right. I, that's one piece that I have really struggled with yeah. is, yeah. I mean, in all seriousness, I was at the golf course this morning and I, I don't think anyone knew and I wasn't fixing to offer it. No. You right. Know? And yeah. Part of it was because it's kind of like, well, why do you get to go to the golf course on Thursday at 9.30? Well, yeah. you don't want to say, because I'm the owner. Right, no, right. But no. that's one of the things that I really struggle with is trying to figure out how to balance that, you know. And, and maybe like we were talking about earlier about this um, this new world um, of some in the office, some remote. You know, there was all this, all this hullabaloo that, oh, everyone's going to work remotely for the rest of our lives, and we're just finding yeah. that's not the case. No. People want community, need they community. Do. But a But a fair balance of – you know, I mean, like of my management staff, they have the option to work two days a week at home. Um, some of our other staff works three days a week at home. And then I've got some staff that they only work Fridays at home. And they're kind of like, look, I like being in an office. I'm more productive. Yeah. And so kind of figuring that out and getting comfortable with it has been one thing that I'm really working on. Yeah. Uh, you know, and. Don't know what the answer is. But again, it kind of goes back to what we um, were talking about earlier with always learning, always being willing to learn and evolve, being truthful with people about, you know, because I bet you what y'all staff would say is the same thing my staff would say. What they do know is I, I may be gone on a Thursday, but they know I've been working, you know. and Yeah. And, but convincing ourselves of that is a lot easier said than done. Agree. Yeah. You know? Totally agree. So, Totally agree. So what advice would you give to people? And this can be broad. This yeah. can be about business. It can be about life. It can be anything. Right. But, you know, like here we are in 2022 and you look around, like what's the thing that you would want to gift to people in regards to advice or just encouragement? From a business ownership perspective or? Either or it, both. How yeah. about, let's do both. Let's start with business ownership. Um. Oof. Oh, man. Uh, gosh, that is deep. You know, if I had to sum it up somewhat, um, think about some of the things I say to Zane, and um, I, I would tell him it's always keep balance in mind. You know, and that's one thing I was guilty of. I've said this to my parents before. And it's another thing that I appreciate about the younger generation is they understand balance. I they think do. they get a bad rap a lot of times because they know how to use their technology. I was pointing like my phone was there, but they know how to use their technology better than I do, better than most of us do to really be productive on it. Yeah. You know, other than phone calls, text messages, and emails, I'm pretty unproductive on my phone. I get on Facebook and I'm terrible <clears> on my phone. I read news, you know, religiously, but but like again, my 26 and 24 year old, they can do anything on their phone. They can type out Word documents and whether it's that or their iPads. And so I think they've got a pretty good uh, grasp on balance. You know, I, that's something I would probably say to someone because balance applies to business, applies to personal applies to your business personal balance you know balance applies to cash on hand versus debt um yeah you know is to contemplate balance in everything uh you do and you know oh i started to say because one of the things i used to say to my dad is or i've said to my dad i used to think i mean again i'm 47 um Technology's come a long ways in the 20, 20 years I've been with them, 22 years I've been with them. Um, and so you kind of, if you came into the professional world 20, 25 years ago or even earlier, really all you had was work ethic. You just yeah. worked your rear off. Yeah. Just work. Well, that always evolves into hours, you know. Um, not always, but, you know, a lot of times. And, Again, the thing technology has given us and the younger generation is better at than us is saying, well, look, I don't have to be grinding in an office no. 12 hours to be productive. Yeah. 
Agreed. You know, they know how to work smarter. They do. I can sit and at that part. Because they've been around it all the time. No matter what we say, it takes us longer to adapt to the new things. Oh, and yeah. Longer to learn them or the willingness to learn them. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's born in their DNA. Yeah. And um, you can't downfall them for that. They yep. get, they're, they're learning what it's taken us a long time to learn. And like you said, that balance, they're able to plug it in, get it done, check the box. Right. Um, go mountain biking. Go do whatever. Well, some of them. Some of them. Yeah. <laughs> no question. Yeah. But you've always no had question. that. Some you've always, always had that. Had that yeah. Because, I mean, humans are humans. And, like, each generation completely agree that they bring different yeah. trends mm-hmm. and different intensities you know, like, like that does ebb and flow. Each generation is slightly different from one another. Like it really is. But, you know, I still think there's, you know, some sort of curve. I do agree that they value the balance and the personal more. Social media is a perfect example. My gosh, they're dancing. They're laughing. They're Mm -hmm. entertaining. TikTok is fascinating. They're so smart and clever and they spend (laughs) loads of time on that kind of thing, even creating when they want to. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, and sometimes they don't. So I think it's, I do think this generation is I, fascinating. I love, I mean, and like they're adopting things in a really interesting way. You, you, you see these young guys going out and starting tech companies from nothing out of mm-hmm. their basements. I, they're grinding it out. Yep. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, and in your that 20s, doesn't you come overnight. Right. Yeah. And, and you see them risking everything. It, it's just in a different way than what we are used to. Yeah. Then you've got to love like you said, the social media point of them going and making money on their own off of a personality yeah, without having a, a big enterprise coming in and going, oh, yeah, I'll sign you for a TV contract. Those days are done for them. Right. They don't even look at it. They go, I'm going to create my own brand right, right here yeah. now and make money off of it. They blew that whole industry yeah. to smithereens. Well, that, takes <laughs> a grind, that takes a grind, too. Yeah. Hats off to them. I, oh, I totally. love it it's watching kids do that. I, I do, too. I do too. They're so clever. The second piece to that that I would offer, because I've said this to my kids, and again, it just kind of going back to, you know, when we were coming up into the professional world, really all you had was your work ethic. And it was, you know, those that worked harder typically were more successful. Right. That was the theory. Mm -hmm. But what technology has done, in my opinion, and I've told my kids this, now you have to be willing to work smart first and never be afraid to work hard behind that to support it. Because there's just so, you know, and I I was thinking about what you said earlier about your to-do list and is my time, is that, you know, should I be doing that or is there something I should give to a staff member to do? You know, I had one of my employees just yesterday and I appreciated her honesty. She said, well, I asked her about something and um, she said, well, you weren't there and I wasn't, I wasn't, and I was kind of unavailable. And uh, she said, well, I didn't have anything to do and I played uh, I can't even think of the game, but anyhow, she said, I, I played such and such about half the day on the computer. I wish I didn't, I wish I'd have had some, you know, knowledge of what to do on that. And I think about what I was doing and, you know, that I was trying to multitask 54 different things, you know, that if I'd have just said, Oh, well here, do this, 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 and this, you know, and she was willing to tell you because she is fine with taking that's right. on more work. That's right. Yeah. It's amazing. Yep. So and she trusts you. Yeah. But, you know, that's one thing I've told my kids a lot. Work smart. Be smart first. I mean, again, I just, there's been some things I've just run into head first thinking I can just outwork all the problems. <laughs> you know. Or I just run head first into things because, right. you know, I don't like to think about the downside. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I would <laughs> offer business owners. Balance and work smart. I like it. Yeah. I love it. So, that is awesome. Yep. Yeah. Michael, thank you so yeah, much absolutely. for such a fun time. It has I been a great time. Appreciate you yeah, coming it's awesome. on. I appreciate Thanks y'all, and we think. Um, I mean, I guess I can say some of these things real quickly. I didn't know how much we would talk about business and our relationship, right? But I will offer this: um, y'all have been a huge part of our success over the last couple of years. Um, I would be amiss if I didn't one say that about y'all as a whole, but then two. Talk about my friend, Brian Talbot, and what a phenomenal piece of our leadership team and support and growth that he has been. He's mentored my son, and, you know, Brian is just, as y'all are, and and, and there's no wonder y'all all all work well together, salt-of-the-earth type people. And, uh, you know, to think about, in fact, that's where we met was in a Zoom in the midst of COVID yes, for my right. convene group. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> and um, 
you know, we were at a place where we needed it. And, and uh, so anyhow, I, I would be, um, I, I would not be doing y'all fair if I didn't tell y'all how much y'all mean to us as a whole, both of y'all, Brian as well. Y'all have been a big, big part of a lot of our success over, and not just in Lone Star where there's a specific uh, relationship, but to be frank, a lot of things we've learned, we've implemented in our wireline company. And, you know, I could go down the, I could go down the list. And so, you know, I, I want y'all to know that how much we appreciate y'all. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you so, so much. And we didn't have you on this for, um, for that, no, you I know, know. Um, I know. at all. We I wanted know that. to I know that. <laughs> pick your but, mind, yeah. but yeah, thanks but a lot. Are, well, I think you. y'all means a lot. friends yeah. and yeah. y'all been great for us. So I thank appreciate you. y'all. That's yeah. awesome. Glad to come do this. Yes. Yeah. Well, onward and upward. Yeah. All right. Thanks everybody. Thank y'all. If you enjoyed this episode of the Corporate Caffeine Podcast, please help us help you by subscribing. I also hope you'll find us on social media. You can follow me, Dacia Coffee, and my company, The Marketing Blender, by searching us on your favorite platform or checking out the show notes for the links. We bring this to you because we envision a business world full of meaning, connection, and prosperity for us all. Until next time, onward and upward.